I was once working with a client who, like many entrepreneurs, was weird about sales. Now, I chatted to him and we've got a major breakthrough happening, so I wanted to share some of that information with you here today. Number one, I asked him, how did you feel when we started working together? Like, you know, the conversation that we had, did you feel all these things you've just told me about sales? Did you feel like I was being sleazy? Like I just wanted to get in your pocket? Like I was, you know, tricking you or um, coercing you or manipulating you into spending money with me? His answer to that was no. He didn't feel that way. And I said, okay, so when you decided to invest uh, what he invested, which was a good couple of thousand of dollars, what was it that you felt in that conversation? And he said, you know, I just felt like we were talking, like we were having a conversation, like you were listening to me, that you understood my needs and that what you did could really help me. And that's what I want to help you with today. If you're someone who feels awkward about sales, who feels um, sleazy and icky and like you don't want to do sales, um, you're probably avoiding, or you are avoiding, the one thing that's actually going to make you money in your business. In the conversation that I had with this client, he actually got so excited about sales that he went away and his action steps for that week was to plan what he's going to say, he's a musician, and then go out. Like, we'll check in, see what you've planned, and then you can go out to the venues and start talking to people uh, and booking in gigs. So I checked in with him midweek and what he'd done was actually gone down a really, really busy main street in Sydney basically door knocking, <laughs> letting venues know about his band, what they offered and asking like, do they have slots? Do they have gigs? How does it all work? I want to perform here. This is what I can bring to the table. And I was just blown away that this guy who was scared of sales, who was awkward about it, didn't know what to say in less than a week, um, had completely flipped things around, become so confident that he was getting out there, proactively pitching without it even being part of our plan for that week, and actually getting meetings lined up and getting gigs booked in. Number one is be clear on your intention, especially when you're going into a sales conversation, but all of the things I'm sharing here today also translate to you selling online when you're posting when you're sharing about yourself on your website and what you do, anywhere, anywhere that you're sharing about what you do and you're being seen by potential clients. So setting an intention, an intention like, I am here to help people deeply transform. Maybe you even go a step further. Like I'm here to, in this conversation to be the best coach this person has ever come across, right? And that's your intention. Maybe a greater intention within your business is like, yes, that you're going to also be paid to serve clients who are aligned with you and you have a bigger vision around that. So let's keep that intention. I'm here to help people to transform deeply and to be the best coach they've ever come across or laughter leader they've ever come across or consultant they've ever come across, whatever it is for you. If that means listening deeply getting to know that person and understanding their problems and if and how you can help that person, not just how, not just like I'm here to sell to you, but if you can help them and how you might best serve them, that's going to help your relationship get off to a really good start. It's going to help you to get out of the, I'm here to make a sale, I have to make a sale, I'm desperate for money, energy and mentality and it's going to set the scene for much better conversation, again, both in person and also through anything that you're sharing online. Second thing is to share how you help people all the time, okay? So this is threefold. Number one, don't just be sharing, having conversations with people, posting on social media, when you're wanting to sell, pitch, and promote things. Keep the dialogue going 
all the time. Share the value that you've got. Share the knowledge that you can bring to the table. Share tips, tools, tricks, etc. to doing what you do or to helping your audience in the situation that they're in that they would come to you for. Second part to this is don't be stingy with your knowledge. Some people get scared about sharing too much online. If you share tips just like I am here in this video right now, that can help your audience to create transformation in their lives, their businesses, their health, their relationships, whatever it is that you help them with, they can see from afar that you are someone who helps them, who has some answers and solutions for them. That allows them to already check a box in their mind that you're someone that they may be interested in buying from or working with. The third part to sharing how you help people all the time is making it very clear and available to people. So I've been guilty of this in the past and I'll tell you a funny story in a second. Make sure that people can find what you offer, how they can work with you, and how they can get in touch with you so that they can sell themselves essentially or they can buy your products and services with ease or research them at the very least. Now, in the last month or so, I was asked, um, like it's really weird, I've never seen a coach who doesn't offer one-to-one -one before. And I was like, I offer one-to-one? -one. And the person who was saying this to me had gone through, looked at my offers, found out whatever they could find out about exactly what I do, exactly what I offer, etc., etc. Yet, they had looked only through Instagram, only on my link tree, which does have a link through to my website, but in the list of things that I do and that I offer, it didn't have one-to-one -one coaching because I've just opened that back up recently. So, if you don't have something out there, people can't know exactly what you do and exactly what you offer. Make sure you're sharing what you offer and how you do it so that people can stalk you a little bit, do a little bit of research and find out, maybe even click through and buy. The more often you share about exactly what you do and how people can work with you in call to actions at the bottom of your posts, in conversations that you're having with people, the less awkward it becomes because it's not this big thing, it's just something that you talk about because that's part of what you do. And it takes the pressure off a sale being this be all and end all conversation or landing page or one thing or another. It allows many opportunities for sales and again, within your mindset and your habits, it becomes a conversation that you're used to having and that you're frequently having and a very important conversation for you to have if you're wanting to make sales. Third tip is be genuine. If you are someone who's genuinely excited and passionate, share that. If you don't use a particular language or a level of language, don't use it. I know in my content, as an example, I'm not someone who writes IMO for in my opinion or all these different little abbreviations because I myself get confused when I see those things and I feel weird when I have to Google what someone actually means. Like, what does IMO mean? What does this mean? So if I don't like that language for myself as a user, as an audience member, I'm not going to use that. So don't use language, lingo, um, etc. that's not related to your clients and be genuine in every other way as well. Be genuine in your conversations with people. If you're fake and you're trying to be or do something that is not genuine to you, it's very obvious and it leaves you lost for where to go next because it's not something that comes organically or authentically to you, which is kind of like, okay, now I'm in this hole, do I keep digging or do I like give myself up? Just be you. Tip number four, which comes directly out of being genuine, is build real relationships. I have had so many one-to-one -one clients either come to me through conversations that we've just had, either just jumped on a Zoom call to kind of get to know each other, 
chats through Messenger or Instagram inbox. Uh, or I've had a lot of referrals come through because my clients can genuinely vouch for what I do, what value I can bring and what I have to offer. When you have genuine relationships with your clients, you can ask them things. I don't have a problem with asking, uh, messaging current clients or past clients and asking them questions, sending them surveys, um, having a dialogue, listening in and asking them, what do you want? What do you like? What do you not like? Especially if you're building something new or, or offering a new service, having that genuine open relationship allows you to get so much more feedback than if you were trying to be all high and mighty, hoping that people are getting results. They don't feel that you're approachable and don't want to tell you the truth. It just has damaging um, elements to it in all aspects, in all different kinds of ways. So what you're wanting to do is really harvest a genuine relationship. What would you actually talk to someone about? What would you actually ask them? Don't worry about a script. Build genuine relationships and people will become clients. As the last thing I will say on this, I have found, uh, built genuine relationships and people have become clients through friends of friends, through people I've traveled with, through um, doing challenges like a selfie with strangers challenge. Um, and then added people on Facebook and built a relationship through there. They start to see what I do. They already know me. They already, I already know them. And then it's a very simple and easy uh, route to working together. And that's really all sales is. It's working together. It's partnering with someone or, or offering them something that you have. Number five, talking about the price. Don't price flirt and don't dance around the dollars. When someone asks you how much does it cost, you need to let them know. And also, you need to do yourself a favor and slow the conversation down and explain to them exactly what's involved. Now hear me out here, people who are like, oh, but I freaking hate when people do that. I just want to know the price. If I was like to you, hey, $20. Here, $20. You'd be like, what? What for? Why? Like, what are you going to spend it on? What am I, why am I giving you $20 exactly? If people don't know what their money is going towards, the answer is more than likely going to be no. People also have their own assumptions. If they're coming to you for a laughter session, if they're coming to you for consulting, if they're coming to you for coaching, and they have some kind of research or previous experience with somebody in your industry, they might have an idea of what that service should cost, even if it's completely different to what you offer. So let's take a laughter session, for example. People sometimes wanna know the price of a laughter session. I'm like, okay, how long is it? How many people is it for? Where is it? Like, do I have to factor in travel costs? I can't just blurt out a price. So please do yourself a favor and do your clients a favor get all the information again it comes back to listening what do they actually want get the information and share your information uh so let's say it's yeah a laughter session so this is what's included this is for travel this is for this this is for that and this is the price right again in a written document whether it's on your website or whether you're having a verbal conversation with somebody being clear in what that is and just holding off not rushing to get to a price so that they understand all the things that they're getting and what your service actually is before you just throw a price in their face because they're like, just tell me the price, I don't want the pitch. Very, very important to yes, give them the price, make it nice and clear, but two, don't rush for the price because when you price blurt, they might go, oh, I didn't expect that and then they can't listen to what you're saying because they're busy in their mind freaking out about the price or having their own judgments of the price, like that seems too cheap or that seems too expensive or whatever it is. Please take your time with the price and make sure you can confidently convey exactly what they're getting for that investment. Speaking of investment, don't use words that you wouldn't normally use. If you would normally say an exchange or 
an investment or these are my rates or this is my price just use your language don't try to fit in a box or fluff it up or make it weird people being weird about money is just weird in general so don't do it just be genuine and imagine yourself asking for the price would you be like what is the investment or exchange no you're probably just going to be like what are your rates or what's your price right speak the language of your clients and be genuine to yourself as well. Number six, have your details and systems sorted. You seem super dodgy if you don't know what you're doing when it comes to the point of sale. When it's like, okay, cool, sign on the dotted line, but I'm not sure where my dotted line is or what the contract is or anything. People are going to run because they don't know if they can trust you anymore when it comes to the point of them saying yes to handing over money and you not being organized so have a clear step-by-step -step process for yourself i've done this a million and one times when i've got new offers or i just want to have everything the, the package prices laid out in front of me i'll have it up on my computer or i'll have it sitting in front of me when i'm on a coaching call so that i don't get fumbly i don't forget numbers or misquote the prices. I have it all there and I'm like, okay, if you want this, this is this. If you want this, this is, this is what the rate is. Have all of that, yes. But then when it comes to, yes, okay, I'm ready to buy with you or I'm ready to sign up. I'm ready to work with you, whatever it is, have it very clear. Again, if it's on a website, it might be like, click here to sign up. And then it might say, or the thank you message after they've purchased, you know, keep an eye out in your inbox because you will be receiving an email to log in and gain access to your course. If you don't receive that email, please email me at bianca at biancaspears.com and I can help you. Or let's say they're joining a program that you've got and you say, okay, the program starts on the 18th of, of August. I'll put your deposit through now. I'll need to grab your credit card details and a couple of other things from you to get you all set up. And you will then go into the group the week before. I'm going to put you in the private group where we're going to be running the program. Uh, that will open up a week before we begin. So first things first, I'll grab your uh, last name. Is it the same as it is on Facebook? Is that your actual last name? Okay, great. I'll grab your email address. I'll grab your you know, whatever, whatever details you need, credit card, etc., etc. Have that structure that you follow so that it's clear for you, clear for the client, and it's a smooth onboarding process to get that client started with working with you. So just to recap on what we've talked about. Number one, be clear on your intention. Number two, share how you help people all the time. Not just when you're pitching, not just when you're launching, don't be stingy with your knowledge and share how people can work with you everywhere they can find you so that it's clear for them what you do and what you offer. Number three, be genuine. Just be you. That's basically the summary of this one. Align with your values, morals and ethics and you'll attract others who share them as well. Number four, build real relationships. Become friends with your clients if that feels good to you. Have genuine conversations with your clients and learn about their lives. It is a relationship that goes two ways, not an opportunity to get something from other people. Five, don't dance around the dollars or price flirt. Take your time with sharing the offer all of the inclusions, and then the price. And number six, have your details and systems sorted and let your clients know exactly what the next steps are so that they're clear on what will happen once they hand over money. If this video has been helpful for you, please feel free to comment below, to like it, to save it for later so that you can come back and dig back into these tips or share it with somebody else who would really appreciate this information. If you yourself are looking for a coach or mentor, I do work with entrepreneurs 
laughter leaders and coaches to help them to build their businesses, to boost sales, to have genuine, authentic relationships with their clients and to feel like they can shine genuinely rather than trying to fit themselves in the box as whatever they think they should be or have to be to be able to make it in their industry. And you can find all of the details for connecting with me and working with me down below.